how to make the narcissist come back. To bastardize a phrase. How does your emotional thinking affect thee? Let me count the ways. I still love her, and I always will. I miss her so much. I know what he is, but I don't care. I just have to be with him. There is no point otherwise. I cannot stand to be without him. The pain is too much, so I would rather have the ups and downs than nothing at all. I understand her now, so I can control the situation better, so I will not be hurt. I can make this work. Since I understand him, I can explain to him what I do, and he will realise that, and he will see that I place him at the centre of everything, and all I want is for us to be happy, and that will make it work. All I need to do is work on pleasing her and asserting my boundaries, and we can get through this. Love conquers all. I am better than her, and he will soon realise what he has lost, and he will come back to me. We are soulmates, and we are meant to be. They say if you let someone go and they come back, then it is meant to be. That is what I must do. Let him go, and ensure that he returns to me. I know he has hurt me, but I have done some bad things as well. So if we are honest with one another, we will sort things out. I only want him and nobody else. I know he is bad for me, but, well, it is so boring without him. Nobody else compares. I don't care if he hurts me. I love him, and I know he really loves me, and that is all that matters in the end. Love hurts sometimes, you know. All of the above are the product of the fraudulent effect of emotional thinking and a thousand, thousand further phrases besides. I have heard so many and read even more. I have no doubt that you can think of similar utterances and proclamations. So if the bond is so tight and the pain so awful that you cannot bear to be without the narcissist, why not then make him or her come back to you? after they have disengaged from you, or subjected you to a prolonged period of time on the shelf. The narcissist wanted you once. They seduced you, and goodness, how did they seduce you? Those magical, mesmerizing days of golden, beautiful, flawless perfection. If only you can return to them, how might you go about achieving this? What steps can you take to ensure that the narcissist returns to you and not only returns, but stays. After all, you know they are a narcissist now. You understand why he or she operates as they do. You recognize the manipulations, and you are confident that you can handle the narcissist, so that not only are you not hurt, but so that you do not lose them. You have gained the power through knowledge, haven't you? Now, all you need to do is cast that magic spell to make the narcissist come back to you. What can you do to guarantee the return of the narcissist to your arms, to your home, to your bed? Provide that positive fuel. Provide the narcissist with that reminder of the glorious and potent fuel that once drew us to you. Let it gush and fountain from you with your praise, love, and admiration for us. Do not hide it under a bushel. Let it appear in vast quantities and often. Drown us in your positive fuel. Make those traits of yours which we expressed admiration for shine and appear prominently, so that we see what rewards await us by coupling with you once again, so we can claim those traits once more. Make sure that your achievements are noticeable, that promotion that recent big client win, the articles printed in the press, the new followers for your work, and so on. Ensure that the residual benefits are available once more. Have that house open to us whenever we choose. Make it clear that money is available. Let us know that we have a housekeeper who will cook, clean, and care for us. 
Let it be known that what is yours is ours, that your contacts are acceptable to us for our use, that we can plug into your networks once again and attend those prestige events. Whatever those residual benefits are, make it evident that they are ours for the taking. Demonstrate penance for everything bad that you have ever done. Make it clear that you were at fault and that we were not. Recognize your shortcomings and apply the suitable mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, so that we know that your contrition is genuine. Remove any obstacles. If you have a new partner, ditch him or her. Drop the restraining order. Obviously destroy the no-contact regime. There should be no fence, no wall, no barrier to our glorious return. If we have been bad-mouthed in any way, make sure this is overturned. Ensure that family, friends and colleagues speak well of us, correct any misunderstandings they may have acquired about us, and create a fertile ground for the growth of our new and improved facade. Look and be your best for the relevant cadre of narcissist, be it somatic, cerebral, victim or elite. Ascertain which we are and cater to that by adjusting your appearance, behaviour, outlook, etc. to align with what we want. If you're uncertain, read the book, Sitting Target. Demonstrate subservience once again and your willingness to submit to our authority. Be strong to the world at large, if that is the way that you are, but ensure that we know you will roll over and want your tummy tickled by us on our return. Those are the key grounds which cover the various matters which you need to attend to if you are looking to make us return to you after you have been disengaged from, so that your pain and misery is swept away and you can embrace the wonderful new golden period, Mark II. Will those steps that I have just described to you guarantee our return? No. All of those things are products again of emotional thinking. You can never, ever make us return. Why? This impossible outcome, much as you may want and long for it, although logically you should not, can never be guaranteed to happen for three reasons. 1. We are the controllers. We control. You are the controlled. That is our mindset. You do not tell us what to do. You do not make the decisions for us to obey. You do not bring about a situation because you want it. It happens if and only if, because we want it. You may make the situation more appealing to us, granted, but even then, there is never a guaranteed outcome. We must decide if we wish to return. It is not even when we return, but if. It may never happen. And if it happens, it is only because we decided that, and we decided when, and on our terms, not yours. You cannot compel us to do these things. We are designed to reject any threat to our control. And even though what you are doing might be viewed by you as something good for us, from our perspective, we may still regard it as a threat to our control because of the narcissistic perspective. No matter how inviting you make things, no matter how much you place yourself on the sacrificial altar and declare that you will do anything and everything for us, it is not guaranteed to work because the way that we are designed is that we must always have control. And that means we have to be the decision maker. Two, you do not know what else is occurring in our fuel matrix. No matter how well you tempt us with the creation of what you think is an inviting scenario, someone else in our fuel matrix may well be outshining you. If we have a new intimate partner primary source and we are in a golden period with them, there is nothing that you can do to affect that. Our fuel needs may be met by a variety of appliances, and therefore there is little or no need for you at all. You don't know the extent of our fuel matrix, how it's constituted, who is in it, and what roles those people take. You do not know how much fuel is provided, how often and to what potency. You do not know how the character traits are supplied, nor the residual benefits. And because of this lack of knowledge, 
You can never have any guarantee that we will return to you. 3. Our black and white thinking. If you are painted black, you are painted black. And no matter what you try and do, well, you, can, you can't shift that perception. You're not guaranteed to be able to do it. That means you can go and be superlative in your provision of fuel and everything else, but ultimately it will be scorned because it is viewed through the black lens. Your treachery, as seen by us, obscures and denigrates everything that you do. You remain painted black until we decide that you are painted white. And whilst you might cause us to regard you as white because of something you should do, you should note that A, this still doesn't guarantee our return to you because of the first two points that I've made, and B, your turning white is usually as a consequence of someone else in our fuel matrix turning black, and therefore you haven't got any control over that happening and when. Furthermore, you may become painted white, but you can soon become painted black very quickly, and you have little or no control over how that happens. So, how can you make the narcissist return to you? You cannot. The reason you may want it to happen is because you are being blinded by your emotional thinking. I recognise that. And you can tell me all the reasons why you want it to happen, how it will be different and so forth, and I will shoot down each and every reason that you give me with ease, with logic. You cannot make us return to you. And one day, when the emotional thinking clears, when you have driven it down to the lowest level and logic prevails, you will accept this and say, I do not want the narcissist to return because he or she is a narcissist. When you do that, you have begun to seize the power. <laughs>